What is up, guys, and welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. Cam, here with you, as always. Uh, I'm by myself today. We were supposed to have Johnny Boy after um, the whole... I don't think we were recording that for some reason. Because it's fucking muted. Amateur shit right here. YouTube's the only one that's going to get to see that. Try it again. Take two. Because I'm a fucking moron. What is up, guys? And welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. Cam, I'm here by myself. Um, we were supposed to have Johnny Boy in the lab with us after the Tyler and Mike interview. Johnny Boy got sick. Johnny Boy uh, does not feel so good. So, we'll have to save that episode for another time. Guys, thank you so much. Um, stoked about all the support we're getting here. Uh, Numbers-wise on the podcast, the Road to Redemption t-shirt is live. Um, it's on pre-order right now. You can go to ambitionthreadsco.com and you can grab the Road to Redemption t-shirt. I try to keep them low. Uh, they're only $19.99. We are doing free shipping on orders over $40, so if you grab my shirt and then grab something else from Ambition, it's free shipping, um, I think. I don't think they have anything that wouldn't equate you know, two shirts or a shirt and a hat to be 40 bucks. So go over there, please uh, grab those, show your support, let people know about the podcast. That way, other than that, we're ready to jump into it. I want to start by saying we're going to start talking a lot more about sports. College football is right around the corner for us. Uh, the Irish kick off September 1st. We play our rival Michigan. So every Monday night after the Monday night game, uh, we're going to, I'm going to host a Monday night podcast about sports only. So that'll be what the, but I will start talking more and more about sports on the podcast. It's time. I'm going to take a Yerba Mate break. One second. All right. So, speaking of the Irish, they uh, they do something called the Shamrock Series. Usually they play in um, in another type of field. So, a couple years back, they played at Fenway Park, and they played on the field for their Shamrock Series game. They got obliterated um, that game, I'm pretty sure. And this year, the Shamrock Series jersey is it's a replica from the Yankees. And I think it's ridiculous. I think it's not a good move at all, but... The Shamrock series has always kind of been a, sort of a joke uh, as far as how Notre Dame has performed and stuff like that. Anywho, a couple weeks from now, um, the Irish will be kicking off. I will not be purchasing that jersey. I did just order a bunch of stuff from Fanatics. I got a couple Irish shirts and a couple hats. And um, my wife actually got me that green jacket you guys have been seeing on the old Instagram. So... Ready for college football season. I'm excited for that. Let's jump into the first topic of the day. My issue, one of my issues that I've been dealing with or recognizing about myself lately is I want everything to speak to me now. Now that I'm going on this journey of mindset chasing and constant um, self-improvement in the mental form, I want everything, every little thing to speak to me somehow. And I think I'm starting to kind of become that annoying guy that's like, oh yeah, well, you, why would you do that with everything? And I don't, I don't want to be that guy. I want to always be able to have interesting and uh, important relationships and conversations with people. But I definitely don't want to be that guy that's like, they're like, oh, here comes Mr. Mindset or something like that. So um, the original, I, I changed it. This is the first topic. The original topic was um, that I believe that church is is kind of like that show Scared Straight. Only because if you look, most people get into church because um, they're trying to make somebody start living a better life, right? That's why most people start going to church. You see it as a kid, you know, the kids are out in the street and they're like, oh, you know, you're going to church on Sunday out here acting crazy. And they think that, you know, they're going to go into church and this kid is going to get told, well, if you're out here smoking weed and kissing girls and doing all this shit, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever. And it's it's kind of like a scared street. Uh, you know, very little do, at that time when you're a kid, 
do they tell you about the love and the forgiveness and stuff? They do just to kind of get you to stay in the door so it's not all gloom and doom. But it's more, you better not live with someone before you're married, and you better not swear, and you better not smoke this or kiss that person. And it's, it's a complete way to try to transform someone. I see it a lot with addiction. Most people, when they're going through addiction, they're off, uh, or recovery, the early processes of recovery, they do try to formulate some religious things because in AA, your higher power, whatever you may choose to call it, is a very fundamental part in your life. You have to realize that there is a power out there greater than you. Now, AA doesn't, um, you know, they don't team up with any religions. They, it's You're free to believe whatever you want, but believing in a higher power is definitely there. In the United States, the main, the most popular higher power is God, being Catholicism or Christianity. So most people early in recovery are either seeking, um, seeking the church or it's being sold to them by somebody else in the program. Because it's a like-minded affair. If you're going to an AA meeting and you're enjoying it and you're getting the value out of it that that I was never that person. I hate AA meetings. I think it's just a bunch of people complaining. Um, that's me personally. I know people that love it. I'm in the program. I'm in recovery with um, people who love AA. It's just it wasn't for me. And but what I find is if you're the type of person who likes AA and that's what you find value in it because there is value there. You would also be the type of person that would be able to sit down in a church and and grasp onto that message. For me, I can't do that. When I sit in a church and I have someone speaking to me and condemning me because I'm selfish and you know because I'm this and because I'm that, and at the same time, yes, newer age pastors are are starting to kind of throw it in there. You know, you're evil because you're you think this, or you're evil because you do that, but aren't we all? You know, they're kind of starting to put this little disclaimer, but it's usually some form of condemnation. At the very end, they bring the energy back up about how great God is, and how loving He is, and the guitar starts playing slowly, and it pulls you in emotionally, and then they do an altar call. Well, now, come, if you want to not be this person, come to the altar. Bow your knee right now, and we got the got the slow like mood guitar playing in the background and it's setting a whole vibe and now you're comfortable and you feel you feel like a better better person because you've acknowledged some of your wrongdoings and now you're willing to make a change for them and because it just feels so good now and in this moment now I'm buying in I'm buying I get it I know what people are talking about now and it just kills me um, in the regard of I love what you're doing I love that you're finding something that is um, helping for you. I, I, I love that it's making you feel better, at least for a few minutes. But what soon comes after that is they want so bad to maintain to be a part of that group and for to, to be that so badly and maintain that feeling. It's one the same as someone who's chasing a high. You have, a, you have something, you have some kind of void in your life that you're needing filling. So that person is doing the same thing by chasing that high of going to church on Monday nights, Wednesday nights, and Sunday nights, and sometimes Saturday evenings. Is You're chasing that feeling of connection with whatever it is that's make, that makes us what we are. After that, as you dive deeper, you want so badly to stay in that group that you start to go, well, if I want to stay in the group, I have to preach this to other people. Which is, again, the same thing I'm doing right here. Um, I'm not talking about, I'm not asking you to believe in a specific deity or anything like that, but I'm asking you to open your mind and consider things the way that I'm expressing them. And there's some people, when it comes to religion, they've already tuned out. You know, they don't want to hear about it because they either have a hard stance against it or they don't like the fact that I'm kind of breaking it down to the nitty-gritty of it. But usually when you want to stay a part of that group in religion, now you go out and you, quote-unquote, share the gospel. And when you go out and share the gospel, you're often telling people, you live a life of sin. If you want to live a life that's better and be guaranteed heaven forever, you'll do what I'm doing and you'll start 
raising awareness to the fact that the world's living the, the wrong way. The world is destined for hell. We're all sinful people. We're all terrible. But if you bend your knee, bow and agree allegiance to this one thing, and then make sure you drop some money in that plate, big dog, when you come on Sundays, you're saved. All the while, hearts are still being broken. People are still being people. But it's because now they're... They're in a life of condemnation when their inside being is telling them, hey, something's not right here. Something's not right here. Not to bring up negative current, current events, but it was a thing in the state of Pennsylvania. They found that over a thousand children were sexually abused by over 300 priests in the Catholic Church in Pennsylvania. Are you kidding me? And the, the whatever, I don't know his title, I think it's a cardinal type, where he's like the head pastor, priest, over the Catholic Church in Pennsylvania. He come out and said, uh, you know, oh, well, the church and myself and these pastors involved, I, I feel like I'm calling them priests. Priests involved ask for your forgiveness. And they admitted to it. Okay, and here's how I see that. And, again, I could be over-searching things so that way it speaks to me personally. But, if you have a thousand children who were molested by over 300 different... We lost the YouTube video. Uh, I don't know how we did that. I don't know how long ago, so I apologize for the quick break. I'm trying to bring you guys some better production value. I'm going to move on from that topic. I'm going to move on. Uh, I talked about that one way longer than I wanted to. We're already 24 minutes in, and we've only touched on the first topic. So this one may be a long one. Depression in people. How we all, how we allow depression to be our reason as to why not. Uh, that's a pretty vague Pretty vague topic, but I can definitely touch on it. I've touched on it a thousand times before. For some reason last week, I, I gave, I got kind of down. I got kind of in my feelings. I don't really understand why. It, it faded as fast as it came on. But for one day, I was just kind of in a really shitty mood. And, uh, and I kind of looked at it and I said, okay, yeah, I may have a little bout of depression coming, you know, might need to be aware of that for the next couple days just so I don't act accordingly but when I woke up I I was like yeah I just I don't feel good and I I would much rather I think I would feel better if I just stayed at home and lit my candles and turned on a podcast and just kind of sat and kind of went back into my into a deeper topic that I enjoy like in my mind so I'm not gonna go to the gym today it'll be okay and then well, you know, I'm sad, and I don't really want to take time to cook and then clean because then I've got more stuff to do, and I'm sad today, so I'll make pizza rolls for lunch. And, um, I'm giving myself a thousand reasons why I should not go to the gym, why I should not eat the things that I know I should be eating, why I should not, you know, whatever, get up and do the dishes. Like, I'm giving myself all these reasons why not. And it's not that I'm saying... Well, I have depression, so I can't do these things. It's, well, you know, I have this, so it's okay. Why not? Why not just kind of take it easy on myself for a minute? And when, when the dust cleared and I started to feel better, I looked and I was like, why was I being such a Nancy about everything? Like, yes, I wasn't in a great mood, but if I would have got up and gone to the gym, I would have felt better, and I know it. I would have. I would have. But in that moment, wearing a hoodie, lighting a candle, putting my podcast on, just being safe for a minute, I knew for a fact that was going to work. But I was too afraid to do the shit I was supposed to do anyway and then feel better afterwards because I got my blood flowing. And I, the same stuff I preach, I struggle with. That's why I say, like, if you're dealing with depression, get up and move your body. But I was in a position where I could have done the same thing and I didn't. But you don't even realize it in that moment. You just don't realize it. Your, your mind goes, this is how I can protect you right now, so let's do this. And then again, three days later, I come back and I was like, damn it. Now I haven't been to the gym in four days. Now I've got to do this, and now I've got to do that. And 
and I've been eating like shit. My body fat's probably through the fucking roof, and I'm doing this. I'm doing... So today, I said, enough with the noise. Enough with the noise. I'm getting up. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to eat better today. I'm going to record a podcast. I'm going to be successful again today because I'm tired of that shit. I've done it. I'm not going backwards anymore. And then I started to feel kind of powerful when I, everything that I did going forward, which, I mean, it's 12.39, I still haven't eaten yet today, but I did work out. Uh, I'm not eating the way that I should, and I'm not eating the types of things that I should be right now, but I'm trying. I'm trying to get back on it. Um, but that's it. Hold yourself accountable, and hold yourself, hold the powerful you accountable. Stop letting yourself backslide on things. Stop letting yourself give you reasons as to why not to do the things you know you're supposed to be doing. Whether it's the gym, whether it's studying, whether it's spending more time with your spouse, whether it's calling your mother when you know you should. Staying in connection with the people that matter to you. When, you're, when you give yourself the reasons as to why not, well, I've had a long day and, and I, we don't really have anything to talk about. There's no reason for me to call them right now. Yes, there is. Call them and let them know that you care about them. And then you know, they'll reciprocate that feeling and it makes you feel better, but you just got to do the stuff you don't want to do. The stuff that when you're sad, you give yourself the reasons why not. Stop doing that. And I'm yelling at myself here because again, I spent, I wasted an entire week of progress. I was still putting out podcasts and I was, but I think you guys can maybe even hear it in my tone in the last episode. Um, where I just wasn't on. I just wasn't me. Um, I heard it when I heard it back, and I was like, man, I sound, I don't know, I just sounded different. So uh, don't do that. Don't give yourself uh, an out. Don't give yourself that long. Let's talk about the traits of the homeless for a second. Uh, here in Clarksville, we have a ton of homeless people. Um, they're all on the side of the road, and there's they're, they're everywhere around here. And I was looking at the traits of these people, you know, they're coming up with very creative signs, so they're creative people by nature, you know, they're, they're making a sign to draw you in. Some of them are funny, some of them are begging, some of them are just general, there's a guy here that just has a sign that says God bless, but they're creative in their nature, they're creating a persona about them just with the sign. Respect. Um, it's marketing. Is all that is. But then when I look and these it's the same people out on the corner every day on day, same time, all the time. They're always there. And then I look and when that person's not there, I was driving home last night and uh, Clarksville's trying to clean them all out. They're trying to get them off the street because it's it's really ridiculous here. If you drive through Clarksville, they're everywhere. It's, and it's just making companies look bad. It's making the city look bad as a whole. So they're, they're trying really hard to put these programs in place where these guys have places to spend their day where they can make money and that have food and places to stay. The city's doing a good job at trying to combat the problem. But when I look and uh, I'm driving home and I haven't seen one homeless person on a road and it actually caught my attention that I hadn't, I pulled up to one of the popular stoplights that there's always one at. And there's no person, but there's three McDonald's cups, a couple fast food bags, cigarettes, all kinds of shit laying where the absence of this person is. And I said, that's also a trait of the homeless, where yes, they're very creative and they're hustler savvy, but they also don't pay attention to the little things that if you were given a home right now, what would it look like? If you're willing to just set a bunch of trash down in a place you don't even own and walk off. Like, you're you're making the world a worse place when you don't even have a place to call your own. So why should you get a place to call your own when you treat the community like shit? Like, and they leave all this stuff and they stand out there and smoke all day and flick the cigarettes all over. And by the time they leave, it's fast food, trash, cigarette butts, water bottles, whatever. Sometimes articles of clothing, like they just leave them there. And it's like, okay, that's why you're homeless. Because you can't respect things that don't even belong to you. Therefore, you don't have the traits to really care about other people. Now again, I'm sure there's homeless people, I'm generalizing, 
but I'm sure there's home, homeless people that work every day and try to do that. I'm talking about the ones that I'm experiencing. And I think that's a trait that I want to talk about, which is just doing the small things. I don't take it as far as like Andy Frisella does, where he goes out and makes the videos of him looking through the back seat of his employees' cars, because how you handle your, how you uh, keep your car is a general reflection of who, who you are as a person. I don't believe that. Um, I think that's easy to say when you don't have kids, and I think that's easy to say when, uh, you know, and not that he doesn't have a family, he's got, he's married, but, and he also has like two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollar cars, so again, if you can afford that, you could probably afford to constantly go and get your car cleaned. Um, someone who's living with two kids and a spouse and you work multiple jobs, it's a little harder to keep your car clean. Um, but I get the idea. Small practices, he's always talking about um, wiping pee off the seat if you're a guy. If you can't do that, then you'll never truly be successful. And it's just because you can't care about shit that's not even yours. So why should you be granted the nicer things in life? And that I agree with. Um, and with that one, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. People trying, I talked about that one. I uh, don't want to talk about that one. We've already been 33 minutes in. We got one of our episodes taken down, folks. Uh, episode 30, In My Feelings, 30 Minutes a Day, which I got a ton of good response on. I put the Drake song, In My Feelings, at the end, and it also started the episode, and Universal Group, um, yeah, they took it down. They, they flagged it as copyright, and they took it down. So, I don't know if I'm going to continue uh, the songs at the end. Uh, I know I can for the cash flows. I've never had issues with MGK or Mac Miller. Drake was the only one I've had issues with um, so far. They they would not have in that one. And the place that I host this podcast, it has a three strike rule. So if I get hit two more times, that's it. Uh, they'll they'll take the podcast down, and I have to completely restart under a different thing. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Um, we've we've been making some serious ground here. So I need to be careful, but we'll see how to go proceeding forward. If you guys ever want to hear any types of music on the back end of this podcast, please let me know. Uh, as long as it's not Drake at this point, I'll pretty much try it. Okay. The advice that I was given was to, uh, in this note, in this podcast off on a positive note. So I'm going to do that. I saw a story on Facebook. I wish, um, the video, um, portion of this podcast, I wish I could show it on here, but, and I would play the audio, but there really isn't any. It's a guy on a New York City bus, or um, what's the underground one that they take? I forget the name of it. It's not a bus, it's a um, subway. Uh, the guy was on the subway, and he was listening to music. You could tell he was kind of bouncing his head back and forth, and he was listening to music. All the while, there was this little cute kid um, was sitting next to him, and he was kind of dressed pretty dope. Like, you could tell this kid had a pretty awesome energy about him. And he kept kind of staring over at whatever this guy was listening to or watching. And he was just trying to get into it without being rude, like he wasn't trying to invade his space. So the guy took his headphones off and gave it to the little kid and just let the little kid vibe out while he rode the train. I was like, that's so cool. Like, you could tell these two didn't know each other. And of course, I mean, I, I don't feel it necessary to add this part in, but it was a young...